Hello learners, uh, welcome to our class today. I am your instructor, CPA Ringo Frederick. In our class today, my good students, I want us to analyze the concept of our working capital management, which will be very key in our course for financial management. So looking at uh, working capital management, you'll find that uh, basically it's just uh, a strategy that the firm normally tend to use to manage its current assets and current liabilities. These are what will entail the whole concept behind working capital management, whereby you are saying that uh, basically it's just a strategy which a firm will use to manage its current assets and current liabilities. So the whole idea here is that uh, we are looking at our current assets and uh, we are looking at our current assets and uh, current liabilities. So we just want to look at uh, ways which the firm is going to effectively manage the current assets and the current liabilities. Whereby, at this point, you should know very well that for us to determine our working capital, anytime we are requested to determine our working capital, one key formula should always tend to click at the back of our mind. And basically, this is what? Aspect of our current assets, talk of current assets, minus current liabilities, minus current liabilities. So this is very uh, important that should stick at the back of our mind that for us to determine our working capital, we normally tend to talk of what? Our current assets minus current liabilities. So to this point, we are understanding that we want to look at ways that we can effectively manage our current assets and current liabilities. So therefore, in this case, that is to say, we'll be looking at the following items in managing our working capital. So anytime you're talking of current assets, key element, of course, we'll be talking of uh, receivables. Uh -huh. I'll be talking of aspect of uh, inventory. And I'll be talking of what? Cash, main items of current assets. Whereas under current liabilities mainly, of course, we will be talking of what? Aspect of uh, payables. Aspect of uh, payables. If at all, of course, you know very well current liabilities will also constitute items to do the overdrafts and all the other elements. But here, basically, we are talking of what? Payables. So you'll find that uh, this category of assets, and these are category of uh, current assets and category of what? Current liabilities. So our case, my good students, looking at the concept of uh, working capital, it's just a matter of us to see how we are going to manage our receivables, how we are going to manage our inventory, how we are going to manage our cash, and how we are going to manage our payables. That is a summary of working capital management, my good students. So in this case, we'll be analyzing each and every concept, and because we are doing our revisions, uh, which by the way, our model, uh, our revision is uh, ongoing, you can join these classes for those who are preparing for the exams. So uh, in this case, in our class today, I want us mainly to focus on cash management. Because by now we've understood that anytime you're talking of working capital, my good students, we'll be looking at current assets. So you see the component of current assets. We've also seen the main component of what? Current liabilities. So therefore that should take us to this main point here. I want us to look at at what point, or rather ways that you can manage our ways that you can manage our cash. So therefore, in this case, I want us to look at uh, uh, this uh, concept of management of cash, 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 of course, under working capital, management of cash under working capital. And uh, we'll be using uh, an illustration question from our block model paper. This block model paper, kindly, you can just download below this video. We have a link which is below this video. On the comment section or on the details of this video, you're going to get a link. So this link, you're able to download the question that we'll also be doing in our class today. So uh, looking at uh, management of cash, my good students, because right now we have a basic understanding of what capital, uh, or rather of what uh, working capital will entail. Talking of uh, management of cash, at this point is upon us to understand that, uh, of course, this is a liquid asset. And therefore, it will be very vital to see ways that you can manage our, our cash. 
Methods of managing our cash at this level, we'll talk of two main. That is number one, we'll be talking of uh, number one, main methods of management of cash. Management of cash, you can have management of cash methods. Management of cash methods. Management of cash methods. Management of cash methods. Methods of managing our cash. You see that at this level, we'll be talking of two. That is number one, Miller. Or model and we'll be talking of number two but more but more cash management model so we'll be talking of these two models we'll be talking of Miller or model cash management model and Baumula Baumul Baumul cash management model Baumul cash management model so basically these are the models that we'll be looking at and therefore in this case i want us to consider the first one because we're looking at our revisions right my good students and uh of course uh this concept will be very vital and is very vital for any student doing uh financial management so i want us to look at this model miller or model a very uh, a very a very interesting uh, model a very interesting model, a very interesting model. In our case here, a very, very interesting model. So you'll find that uh, basically one will ask probably where, uh, where do you normally come up with such names? You'll find that this model, of course, was named after the person known as Martin Miller and uh, Daniel O. Daniel O. Daniel O. So that's why we are timing it as what? As Miller O. It was named after Martin Miller and Daniel O. O, Daniel O, Daniel O, Daniel O. And you know, some people can pronounce this as or, right? There are some people who can pronounce that as or. So, uh, at this point, you'll find that the, these two people came up uh, with this model of cash management. And the focus was uh, to look at it in the context that uh, at any given point in our operation, the firm will always be having this level of cash. Because remember, yes, we want to look at ways that you can manage our cash. So in maintaining this cost, in maintaining our cash, we want to look at the minimum cost that you can always tend to, to incur. And therefore, at this point, you'll find that under this model, we have categorized our level of cash into three main. That is, number one, we normally tend to talk of higher cash limit, higher cash limit, Number two, talk of lower cash limit. And finally, number three, we normally tend to talk of return point. This is the same as optimum, optimum cash limit, return point, or rather optimum cash, optimum cash limit, optimum cash limit. So many a times you'll find that... Uh, the firm will always tend to make sure that this, so long as uh, this cash is fluctuating between the higher cash limit and lower cash limit, at this level you find that the firm will not be incurring any form of costs, transaction costs, that is the case. Because the whole idea is that uh, we want to look at methods that if at all you are to maintain this cash, we should incur the minimum cost as much as, as much as we can. So in this case, you see that uh, under Miller or model, our cash levels or limits you're going to have three. That is, of course, higher cash limit, lower cash limit, and return point, which many a times you normally also refer to it as what? As Z point, as Z point, as Z point, Z point, Z point, which is very, very important. And uh, that case also, some will also refer to it as uh, other than optimum, you can also term it as a target cash balance. All these are the terms that you can use to refer to uh, this uh, level target cash balance target cash balance so all these are uh, names that you can use to refer to as that uh, to refer to that return point so you'll find that uh, under miller o model you'll find that under miller o model at this point we normally achieve return point by expressing it as a third of spread 
So there are some various terminologies that you must always tend to have at the back of your mind anytime you are talking of Miller or model. At this point, Mwalimu has mentioned something to do with spread. Probably one will ask Mwalimu, what is this spread that you're talking about? Because recall at this point, you'll say that many a times uh, the firm will always tend to make sure that this cash basically is fluctuating between lower and, ca lower and higher cash limit, right? So we are saying that for us to achieve this optimum balance, for us to achieve this optimum balance, many a times which you are referring to it as a return point, you'll find that is always going to be expressed as a third of a third of spread. So therefore, these are some of the basic concepts that you must always be having at the back of your mind. Key concepts, term them as a key concepts that you must always tend to have at the back of your mind. So number one, we are talking of what we are referring to here as spread. Because at this point, the whole idea is that you'll see that you'll find that uh, this cash basically will be fluctuating in between. Uh, this cash will be fluctuating in between, uh, in between these two points, right? In between these points. So talking of a spread, basically, for us to achieve our spread in uh, assumptions of Miller or model, it's just a simple concept whereby we know very well that I should be talking of what? I should be talking of a third, uh, not a third, but three, into what? Uh, aspect of, uh, of course, three times the transaction cost times the variance, which the variance you know very well is just what? Standard deviation squared. In this case, you're going to divide by four times our daily interest. I basically, that refers to our daily interest. I should not forget all this raised for a third, all that raised for a third. That will give us our spread. So you'll also find that some people will also do it in this, by the way, which will also be very correct, that to determine your spread, you can also take three into three or four times your transaction cost times the variance, which is standard deviation uh, squared. This is standard deviation of our cash flow. That is, a star, that is the variance of our cash flow. This is the variance of our cash flows, my good students. Talk of what? We divide by uh, daily interest. We divide by daily interest raised to power a third. So you can define or rather you can determine your spread by taking either. By taking either, that will give us what you're referring to as spread. Now, because spread is always a very key element, you'll find that so long as I'm having the spread, now we can determine what we're referring to here as what? As return point. Now our optimum. Talk of return point now. So in the event that I'm required to determine our return point, my good students, what must we always have in mind? To determine our return point, as we've started, you see that, you'll find that return point, which is also by the represented by Z, will be expressed as a third of spread. So therefore, to determine our return point, this will also be very simple because I'll be taking my lower limit, my good students, we add by a third times spread. And recall how to determine our spread. We have here our spread. We have our spread. We have our spread. We have our spread. So basically, I'll just be taking a third times spread. That will give us what? That is a lower limit plus a third times spread. That will give us what we're referring to as return point. Then once I'm able to master that key other element that you should be able to know here is how do we determine then our upper cash limit, upper cash limit, which in this case you're having it as H. Mm -hmm. Upper cash limit, that should be very simple, my good student, because at this point, so long as I've determined our spread, you'll find that spread will enable us to summarize almost all this element. So to determine our upper cash limit, I'll be talking of 3 times Z minus 2 times what? Our lower limit. That will give us our upper cash limit. That is 3 times Z, uh, which Z in this case, of course, this is our Z that you're talking about there. That is our, uh, or rather, uh, th th these are basically whatever that I'll be having. Z, this is our Z. We'll determine our Z here, right? We'll determine our Z here. So you'll find that I'll just be taking our uh, 3 times Z minus our lower 2 times lower cash limit, okay? 
The other key element that maybe you should also be having before we proceed to this question that I want us to handle in our block model paper, that is how to determine our average cash limit. How will we determine our average cash limit? Mm -hmm. So to determine our average cash limit, so long as we determine Z, actually Z is almost, uh, or rather the aspect of return point is to guide us in almost everything that we'll be having here. So to determine our average cash limit, if I'm required to determine our average cash limit, we must always be having this at the back of our mind. We must always be talking, of course, of four times my return point. We less our lower cash limit, we divide by three. 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 That, of course, should give us what? That, of course, should give us, that, of course, should give us our that of course should give us our average cash limit. So basically this is what you should always be having. And also another way by way of determining your spread is the way that I've given this case according to uh, Miller or we should also be you can also talk as we can also take spread as uh, taking our higher cash limit minus what our lower cash limit. This is this will also give us what? Our spread. That will also give us our spread. Okay. So now is a time to work out a question. And as I have said that this question, below this video, you can download that question. Below this video, my good students, you can download this question of ours, okay? So once we have that case, uh, I want us to handle that question and see what we'll be having. This will be our question here. Still, better still, you can also take a screenshot of the same. That will also work. So that is our question there. In this case, I can put it here, first of all, before we start working it out, so that you can clearly see it, so that you can clearly see our question here. And look at what the examiner wanted us to determine. Okay, we go through that question together. We go through that question together, my good students, see what the examiner wanted us to determine. So in that case, we are told that Wanga Limited maintains a minimum cash balance of 1.5 million. The standard deviation of the daily cash is 800,000. The annual interest rate is 12%. The annual interest rate is 12%. The transaction cost of buying and selling of marketable security is 200, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm also told here that assume that one year has 365 days were required to number one, using the Miller or cash management model, determine number one, the return point, number two, average cash balance, and number three, what you are referring to as upper cash limit. Of course, you can also go ahead and determine what? And uh, determine, uh, of course, you can also go ahead and uh, determine our, our spread. You can also go ahead and determine our, our spread. So looking at that case, my good students, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Believing that you've downloaded the question, or better still, I can, or better still, I can... Uh, Maintain that question there. Better, ski, better still, I can maintain this question of ours here. So I'm going just to squeeze this question down here. I'm going to squeeze this question down here. Believing that it's still visible to all of us. So the first question here, the examiner wants us to determine our return point. And clearly we've seen that this is how we can determine our return point, right? So first thing first, whenever you're given such a question, the first thing that should click at the back of your mind, my good students, is the formula in determination of our return point. So let us erase the summary of what we had. Mm -hmm. Let us erase this summary and see what we'll be having. So here, the good examiner wants us to determine our return point, which in this case we refer to it as what? As Z. So therefore, my return point here, which you refer to it as Z, 
we've said, number one, I should be having lower cash limit. Which lower cash limit many a times will always be given. I'm going to add what? We're going to add a third times my spread. So this is what will give us what you're referring to as lower or rather return point. So the other question I'm going to ask myself in this case, we don't have our spread. I'll, many a times I'll always be given our lower cash limit. So the big question I'm going to ask myself is that, do I know how to work out our spread? Do I know how to work out our spread? Of course, we should ask that question to ourselves if we know how to work out our, our spread. So spread, basically, we said we'll be talking of, uh, we'll be talking, of course, uh, three into three times my transaction cost times my standard deviation squared of the cash flow. That is the variance of the cash flow. We divide by four times daily interest. This is daily interest raised for a third raised for a third raised for a third so this is what i want us to agree my good student and you'll clearly see how this will ha come about we say that uh, a return point it will be l plus a third of spread can we agree and say that in this event in this event look at this case if i take a third times my spread can we agree that i'll be having can we agree i want us to agree this can we agree that we will be having this case. Just a moment here. I want us to agree that if I take a third of this, it as if uh, the same case, it as if you will be saying that I'll be having what? Three times my transaction cost times my standard deviation squared uh, of our four times uh, daily interest raised power a third. Why? See, because if you troco for a third, so this will cancel each other, right? So therefore, we can clearly come and say in a very simple way that uh, for us to determine our Z, it as if we are talking of uh, three times transaction cost times standard deviation squared of four times daily interest here raised to power a third plus lower limit. Mm -hmm. Can you agree based on the facts here? Right? We can agree that that is how we can determine our that's how we can determine our spread, right? So therefore let us work it out. So therefore here my Z will be three times the good examiner. The good examiner here. Did he give us the aspect of uh, the aspect of uh, the aspect of transaction cost? Yes, you are given. Look at that case, you are told that uh, the transaction cost of buying and selling of marketable security is 200 per transaction. Assume that one year has 365 days. So you can agree and say that my transaction cost was 200. What about the standard deviation here? The standard deviation, you are told that it was, uh, the standard deviation of the daily cash flow is 800,000. So standard deviation is 800,000. We need to square that. We are going to divide all this by 4 times my daily interest. Uh -huh. That is why I want you to be very keen again. The good examiner here had given us what? Our annual interest. The good examiner had given us here our annual interest. Annual interest we are given of 12%. So can we agree we are talking of 0 0.12 if 12% is for the whole year. And for the whole year we are having 365 days. So can we determine our daily interest? Can we determine our daily interest? If I'm having 365 days and I'm given the aspect of our transaction or rather our, our aspect of interest is 12% for the whole year and I'm having 365 days in a year, can we determine our daily interest? Of course, you can determine our daily interest. I'll just be taking 12%, which is 0 0.12, divide by 365, right? Divide by 365. I should not forget to raise this to power a third. Then, after we've worked it out, I need to add what? Our lower cash limit. I need to add our lower cash limit. And in this case, my good students, when we're given our lower cash limit, look at it clearly. 
We are told that Wanga Limited maintains a minimum cash balance of 1.5. So can you agree that 1.5 is our lower cash limit? Of course you can agree because I'm given there directly. So at this point I can remove this question of ours and see what we'll be having. You can just remove this question here and work it out. Now, this is where good students of mine, you are going to be tested your ability to use your calculator. Do you know how to use your calculator? If I may ask that question, right? Do you know how to use your calculator? Uh -huh. This is a big test now. So how will you determine this? First of all, I want us to work the first part here and see what you'll be having. Even before Mwalimu work it out, can you give me the first part? You can work it out and give me the first part to see if we know how to use our calculator, right? To see if we, if we know how to use our calculator. So in this context, my good students, I want us to work out together and see what we'll be having. And then compare with what you've gotten, right? Then compare with what you've gotten to see if we, if you are sailing on the same boat, if you are sailing on the same, if you are sailing on the same boat, if you are sailing on the same boat. So this is what you are going to do. We are going to take, uh, we take, we start with our denominator, we start with our numerator here. I'm having three. Uh, in this case, I'll be having, of course, uh, I, I'm going to have uh, three times 200 times 800,000 squared, which I'll be having my figure there. Then the figure that we do have, we divide. I'm going to open my bracket. We take 4 times I open my bracket. We have 0 0.12. I'm going to divide this by 365 days. I close my bracket to close that segment. Then again, I close my bracket to close the whole bit. So in that case, I'd be having my figure 2.92 raised to power 17, 10 raised to power, uh, 2.92 raised to power 17, right? So in that case, I need to have a third. I need to raise my answer to a third. Remember, this third is just the same as you are talking of what? Cube root. Raised to power a third is just the same as if you are doing a fourth of a cube root. Cube root, cube root, right? So therefore, in this case, what are we going to do? I'm going to click 3. Then we do shift. On shift, if you check your calculator, you're going to see this sign somewhere. That is raised to power x. Right? So after we've gotten our answer, in this case, we clicked shift. I'm going to click that raised to power this sign here in your calculator. Then my answer equals sign. In that case, Molimu is getting this figure. Molimu is getting 663,429. That is what the figure Molimu is getting. I need to add this by 1.5. So therefore, we can agree and say that our 1.5. We can agree and say that therefore my Z here, uh, our Z therefore, our Z will be equal to 2,163,429. And that is what the figure Molimo is getting. Kindly you can confirm with what you've computed on your end. Kindly you can confirm with what you've computed on your end. Molimo is getting that figure. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with that case, my good students, you can proceed and look at what the examiner wanted us to determine again. So after we've worked out our spread, or rather our return point, which that is what the examiner wanted us to compute for the first thing, right? What's the second element? The examiner wanted us to compute what? If you can check our question, the good examiner wants us to compute our average cash balance. The good examiner wants us to compute our average cash balance. Check it out. Average cash balance. So the good question is, my good students, do you still remember how to compute our average cash balance? Remember we had looked at that. And we have agreed that our average cash balance here, my average cash balance, my average cash limit, that is the case, average cash 
balance or limit, we should be talking of my 4 times z, of course, minus l. We are going to divide all this by 3. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. You'll say that, Monimu, why were we thinking that this concept is very hard? It is as simple as this. It is as simple as this. So therefore, in this case, you can agree and say that therefore my average cash limit, therefore we should be talking of what? I'll be talking of 4 times z. Our z already we've computed our z, which is 21, 63, 429. Minus our lower cash limit here, we're having what? 1.5. 1.5. Of course, in this case, you're going to divide by 3. Can you give me the solution to that quickly? You can give me, you can give Molimo the solution to that quickly. So you can agree and see that here, we'll be talking of, uh, that should give us, of course, uh, 4. 4, I'm having 4 times uh, 2163, 429, minus 1.5. So in this case, we can agree and say that we should be talking of how much? We should be talking of our average cash limit to be average cash balance or limit. I'm getting 7,153,716. Kindly you can confirm. Mm -hmm. After that case, the other key element examiner wanted us to compute what? The upper cash limit. Upper cash limit. Which I know by now we are expert on this. Which I know by now we are expert on this. Because we say that for us to determine our upper cash limit, that will be simple. I'll just be taking 3 times Z minus 2L. So I'll just be taking 3 Z minus 2L here, right? Minus 2L. In this case, I will divide this figure by 3. We haven't divided this figure by 3. So in this case, we just multiply, divide by 3. Sorry for that. So in this case, I divide by 3. I'm very sorry for that. We divide by 3. So therefore, if you divide by 3, that should give us how much? I'm getting a figure of uh, 2,384,572. Kindly correct that. Divide by 3. Right? Uh-huh. In that case, that is where Molimu normally tend to say, I just wanted to see if you are following Right? I just want to see if you're, if you're following. So basically, this is what we should be having, right? Uh, so because we've just uh, taken this figure, minus 1.5, we must divide by 3 for us to get our average cash balance. Without you dividing it by 3, of course, you'll be getting your own things. So therefore, at this point, you can agree that our average cash limit is 2,384,572. Right? So the moment you do have that case, confidently, we can determine our upper cash limit where we are saying we'll just be talking of 3 times Z minus what? 2 lower cash limit. 2 times uh, L. 2 times L. 2 times L. Where in this case, very confidently, I can come and say we are talking of 3 times Z, which our Z in this case, it was 2163, 2,163,429. Of course, you're going to deduct uh, 2 times lower cash limit. You can clearly see we had what? 1.5. Mm -hmm. So basically, that should give us what? That should give us what? This should give us what, my good students? So therefore, you can agree and say that my upper cash limit, where is my blue pen? My upper cash limit, therefore, we should be having upper cash limit or balance. I'm going to talk of of course, 3 times 2163, 429, minus 2 by 1.5. We should be talking of how much? I should be talking of 3 million here. 490,287, 287, 287. So that is what we should be having. What about if we are asked to determine our spread? To determine our spread, we could have taken our higher cash limit here, our higher cash limit minus lower cash limit. Where my higher cash limit already we've seen is 3,490,287. Our lower cash limit was what? 1.5. So therefore, we can come and agree that our spread will be what? 
my spread will be of course my answer minus 1.5 to give us a figure of 1 million 990,287 so that is how we are supposed to work it out my good students this is the what we are required to do in that question of us remember i have said that that is our block model paper that is our block model paper that is our block model paper and in that case we have attached just below this video we have attached a certain link this link will take you directly to that question which you can download and also review this video again and again to make sure that you grasp this concept clearly also at this point i want you to go and look at baumol cash management model remember baumol cash management model the concept was borrowed from economic order quantity eoq the whole concept was borrowed from eoq which we have uh, done the videos on the same uh, of course if uh, you've uh, if uh, you are in our classes, you've seen the video there for Baumul cash management model, which will enable you to understand the whole concept of uh, working capital management. So in summary, we say that working capital management is just a matter of making sure that we effectively use our current assets and current liabilities. Current assets, we've talked of inventories. We've talked of the aspect to do with the uh, aspect to do with uh, uh, receivables and cash so in our class today we've just done what cash management so guys i want you to meet me in the next session whereby we are going to do another question in our block model paper which you've said you can download just below this video thank you so much